Welcome to Tom's Tech Notes. You are watching video Reflector 4, how to mirror and record your iPhone or iPad on your Windows PC, user's guide. Reflector will mirror and record your iPhone and iPad displays and your webcam using a Windows 11 PC. We'll describe all Reflector settings, then demonstrate the recommended settings. This video is in playlist iPhone and iPad. There's a link to the playlist at the end of this video and in the video description below the video window. The quick start video briefly describes the settings needed to get Reflector up and running quickly. These videos use an iPhone 11 with iOS 15.6, an iPad 2 with iOS 9.3.6, and a PC with Windows 11 Home. The steps to start mirroring may change for other devices or other iOS or Windows versions. Warning, don't execute Reflector in Windows 11 high contrast mode. You won't be able to read the text in the boxes. Start Reflector 4 on the PC. Before you begin mirroring and recording, set auto lock on your devices to never to prevent the display from timing out while you're recording. Here's how to do it on the iPhone. Tap Settings, Display and Brightness, Auto Lock, and tap Never. Don't forget to reset Auto Lock after you're finished recording so that you won't accidentally run your battery down. Here's how to set Auto Lock on your iPad. Tap Settings, General, Auto Lock, and tap Never. Let's go over all the available settings in Reflector 4. And as we do that, I'll give recommendations for which ones are better to use. So click Settings, Preferences. Broadcast Name, this is the name of your computer. If you check this box, the name of the computer will appear in the box and it will appear on the mirroring screens on your devices. Here, for instance, is the iPhone. Here's the name of the computer. If you change this name to something else, which you can do if you uncheck the box, type something else and apply it, it appears on the devices, on the, on the mirroring pop-up. Uh, again, it's easier just to use the use system name. Show client name, that causes this line to appear above or below the mirror display depending on the position of the mirror display on your screen. The options are on hover, so when you hover over that display, it, the line appears. I would suggest that you just set it to always. Notice you can turn it off. Say on hover or say always. Best to use always. It does not show in the recording made by Reflector 4. Always on top. I do not have it checked. So it follows Windows rules. If you move a window across the mirror display, it, the window covers the mirror display. If you check the box and apply it, then when you move a window across, the mirror displays stay on top. And by the way, I, I recommend you not bother to check it. On startup, show the Quick Connect window. This requires Air Parrot, which won't install on my Windows 11 computer. That's all for the general changes. Let's go to connection. AirPlay resolution, use the one marked recommended on your on the list. It's generally best. Default scale, best for high DPI. You can fill screen or use some default size, but I, f I find that best for high DPI uh, works a little better than the others, I think. AirPlay security, I recommend none. The password option requires Air Parrot, which won't install on my Windows 11 computer. On screen code. Every time you open Reflector and then attempt to mirror one of your devices, the PC will show you a pop up with a code on it that you will then type on a pop up on your device as a matter of securely starting mirroring. If you cl click the on screen code, that will happen every time that you open Reflector 4 and then start to mirror. If you select one-time code, that will only happen once, the first time after you turn on the computer and start Reflector 4 and start to mirror, 
it will show you the code. But if you close Reflector 4, open it again, and then try mirroring again, it will not uh, request your code again. On connection, connect and show device. I'm not sure why you'd want to connect and not show the device. Show frame automatically. That causes the frame to appear on the device as you're mirroring. If there's any buttons on the frame, they'll, they'll be there and it'll be a realistic mirroring of the devices. If you, you say none, there'll just be a rectangle there and it won't look very realistic. If you are showing the frame, you have an option to change the color of the frame. You do it here by clicking the gear wheel. I have it set to black. You can also set it to all these different colors. And they cause things to move around. Now this is one of the few changes that you can make to the, to the mirroring that will affect the recording. That red will show up on recording if you start recording after you set the frame to red. Doesn't rearrange the screen on the recording, but it rearranges it on the desktop. I prefer the black. On the iPad, there are two choices for color, black and white. If you change the size by dragging the edges on the display, it only affects the display. It doesn't affect the recording that Reflector is making. And if you move it around, it's the same. It, it affects the display, but it does not affect the recording. Display full screen causes problems on a two-monitor setup because it blanks both monitors and then shows the mirror displays larger. So I really recommend you not try to display full screen. And if, but if you do want to play with the full screen, you can select the color of the background on the full screen display by clicking here. And you can select the desktop background if you want for that full screen. Recording all connected devices, because I have two devices I'm connected to. If you're only using one, you can use best for single device. And I have no idea what best for app store means. Recording background. Click the arrowhead to the right to set the background color for the reflector recording. Recording resolution. Set it fairly high unless you think your uh, computer is extremely slow. You might cut the overhead down if you use a lower resolution. Recording frames per second, 30s, there are other choices. And recording quality high, and again, there are other choices, but unless you have a very slow computer, I would go ahead and use high. I make no changes to network, director, student. And let's go to the advanced window. Normal logging level. I do have AirPlay enabled because that's how I'm mirroring to my devices. I'm not using Google Cast and Miracast, so I disable both of those to cut computer overhead. I don't want to launch the program at login. Classic renderer. If you're having trouble with the videos that you're recording with your Reflector 4, if, they're, if you're having trouble with watching them or, or even getting them to play, try using the classic renderer. If you're not having trouble, don't use a classic renderer. It would be slower. Include control window and automatic layout. If you make certain changes to the size of the displays, it, it totally screws up the display and things move around in a way you really don't want them to move. If you check this box here, Reflector will arrange things so they don't overlap when you make those changes, those particular changes. So checking this box is a good idea. If you want to clear the device cache from time to time, you can do that on this screen by clicking the box. Here are the steps to start mirroring on the iPhone. I'm already mirroring, but I'll describe the steps you will follow to start mirroring. Swipe down from the top right corner of the iPhone to show the control window. Click the AirPlay box, which is the two overlapping rectangles in this box. As I said, I'm already mirroring. If you're not mirroring, this line won't be here and this line won't be checked. And you will tap the computer name. That will start mirroring. Once you have started mirroring, you have the option to stop mirroring by tapping here. Tap elsewhere on the screen to get rid of, the, of this screen. Tap again to get rid of the control screen. Here's how to start mirroring on the iPad. Drag the bottom up. If you're not mirroring, this box will say AirPlay. Tap it. If you're not mirroring, this line won't be here and this line won't be checked, but it'll have the computer name on it. Tap the computer name. Once you tap it, this line appears. The first time you do it, this will be turned off and you will click it and move it to the right to turn on mirroring. 
Once mirroring starts, tap elsewhere on the screen to get rid of the pop-up, then tap again to get rid of the control center. And now we're mirroring on both the iPhone and the iPad. If you did want to show your webcam, you can click the symbol here. And that moved everything around, but it is showing my webcam. I'm not really lighting the room for the webcam. But that's how you show the webcam. Click the symbol again to make this uh, go away. After you start mirroring your devices, there are reflector settings available on the line above or below the devices. Click the gear wheel on the iPhone. We've already described the options to show or hide the frame and to select the color for the frame. Scale we've already discussed and has the same options. You can fill the screen. It'll go almost to the edges of the desktop, top and bottom. You can set the default size and you can set best for high DPI, which is one I recommend. You can force rotation. If you're on an iPhone screen that can rotate, such as the calendar, and you rotate the iPhone, the frame rotates on the screen. Notice that the window inside the frame is also rotated because I have not locked rotation on the iPhone. Options for rotation, you can force it to the left, so it'll stay there whether you rotate the iPhone or not. The window will still rotate, but the frame won't. If you force landscape to the right, you can turn it around so that the this end is on the other end, and it'll stay there. If, if you force portrait, it'll be right side up, and the frame won't rotate if you rotate the iPhone. And the last option on the rotation, of course, is you turn it upside down in portrait mode. I recommend you keep it set to automatic. Always on top, we've discussed that option before. I recommend you not use the full screen. It will wipe out both your monitors if you're using more, two monitors. We've already described the frame options for the iPad, and all the other options are the same as the options for the iPhone. There are some options for the webcam. If you click this symbol below on the line below or above it, you can select best, best for high DPI, which is the setting I normally use. You can set it to be always on top. We talked about that option uh, earlier. Next, we'll show you how to record with Reflector's record function. To narrate your recording, click the microphone symbol to activate it. Then select the microphone by clicking here. While recording, you can mute the microphone by clicking the symbol to, to activate and deactivate it. To start Reflector for recording, if you're doing more than one device, you can click the red dot above or below each device's mirror display to start recording that display. If you start both of them, they'll both be put on the recording for Red Reflector 4. You can stop either one of those recordings by clicking the red dot again, and you're still recording this one. When you stop the last device you're recording, you'll be prompted to specify a location to save the recorded file. Another way if we're not recording, and I'll go ahead and stop and discard the file. If this is the last device recording. It's going to process the recording, then it's going to ask me where I want to save it. I'm not going to save it, so I'll pick Cancel. Another way to start recording of one or more devices is to click Record All. If there's more than one connected, they'll all start recording. If there's only one re connected, that'll start recording. So you can click that and start them all recording. Red dot indicates that it's recording. And there's a timer showing on each of the lines above or below the mirror display to show that it's recording. Once you've started recording, you can stop recording by clicking the dot again on each one or by clicking stop here. If you stop the last device that's recording, again, you'll be prompted to specify where you want to save the recording. This X will stop recording and mirroring for the device on the line. I recommend you don't stop them that way because if you accidentally stop the last one recording, you are not prompted to save the recording. Likewise, if you close the reflector control window, you'll be prompted to verify you want to close the window. But if you do close the window, you will lose any recordings that aren't finished. So I recommend you don't close this while you're recording anything. Now the eyes will hide or show the recording on the screen, but will not affect the recording that Reflector 4 is making. So if I click the I on the iPad line, the iPad stops being showing on the display. It is still recording, 
and the notice that the format of the screen has changed, but the format of the recording will not change. It'll still show both of them recording with the format determined by Reflector 4. Again, it will hide the last recording, and they're both still recording. So show them again. I'll make a sample recording because I want to show you the changes you make to the screen do not affect the recording. For the sample recording, I'm mirroring both the iPhone and the iPad. I'll start recording them both. I'll hide the iPad recording. Notice that caused the iPhone mirror display to move. I'll bring it back. Now everything's moved around. Again, it doesn't affect the format of the recording, only of the screen display. Now I'll stop recording the iPhone. Now I'll stop the recording and save it. This is the sample recording. It begins with me recording both the iPhone and the iPad. Stopped recording the iPhone. After a few seconds, stopped and saved the recording. As we've seen, Reflector does a great job of mirroring iPhone, iPad, and webcam displays to the PC. However, the user has no control of the format of Reflector's recordings. It can't record the cursor, and it can't record anything other than the device or webcam displays. If you record the Reflector display with a screen recorder instead of with Reflector's record function, you have full control of the recording format. You can point with the cursor as you narrate, and you can include other items from your computer in the recording. The recording format will match the format on your desktop. Here's an example of the frame changes in the previous recording, and a change to the color of the frame. And here's an example of changing the position by dragging, and changing the size by dragging the edge. I'm recording this user's guide video with Cyberlink's screen recorder. If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, please like it and leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website at the URLs shown here. There are links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click the one at upper left to watch other videos in this playlist. Click at lower left to watch a video specially recommended for you. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.